Guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the Ping 425 driver. I've got three different model heads here to test today. We've got the standard Max, we've got the LS Tech, and we've got the SF Tech to test out. Now, we're gonna be diving into what these drivers are all about. We're gonna be getting some numbers. We're gonna take them onto the golf course and test them. We're also gonna get an idea of what Ping are saying about these drivers and why they've gone from good to great with this particular model. Now, if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Got so much more content to come your way, but let's get out and hit these clubs. So first impressions looking down at the drivers are really, really quite nice and very ping-esque should we say, that we've seen over the last sort of few years and last few models from them. Now, the SF Tech and the standard Max version, there's nothing in it. So when you look down, they look almost identical. Now, they are of both a 460cc head, and all the workings to them are kind of at the bottom and at the back of the driver. So when you look down on them, you're not going to see a great deal of difference from them. However, but then when you look down at the LS Tech version, you're seeing a slightly different profile, more of a pear shape compared to a rounded shape. And again, they're trying to get feedback from all the tour players that use their models to see what kind of like that shape would really work for them. And that's what you're getting out of this LS Tech. Also, it's slightly smaller in its profile. So it is a 445 head profile CC compared to the 460 that you're getting out of the Max and the straight face technology. So Max, to get us going then, initial looks really, really nice. I loved the look of the old Max version of the 400, and I was a little bit disappointed in the G410 when they sort of reduced the size of it. But initial looks for this particular model, really, really like it. But first out the bat with that noise, cool, that is loud. That is quite loud. You would get heads turning when you got on the golf course if you whacked this one off the first tee. So I'm going to hit some shots in the studio with all of these drivers and get some numbers. But before I do that, I'm going to head over to Ashbury Golf Club with Lee, where we've done some filming out on the golf course. Right, results down here on the fairway. So I was trying to get quite a bit of shape. If you remember back on the vlog, Lester hit a big banana fade off this, which is where he got the nickname Bubba Barnes. Now, I was trying to do the same down this hole with all three drivers. First driver was the max driver, and you can see where it's ended up. It's not quite got the shape that I wanted to. It just clipped these trees here, and then sort of stalled on the top of the hill. Further on down there is the SF Tech. Now this one was the big surprise because this didn't clip anything. So it managed to get a quite nice bit of fade on the shot. Now considering it's a draw bias golf club, I could still manipulate it in a way in which could move the ball from left to right, which is perfect. Now the LST, that one didn't shape much at all. It went flying up into the trees here. So I didn't get that thing to move as much as what I wanted to, which is actually quite a surprise. I thought I'd get a little bit more of a shape from the LS Tech than I would from the other two drivers. So we've come out onto the sixth hole here on the Kigbeer course, and I'm gonna do a sort of a run of a few holes now hitting these drivers, but these are properly tight holes. So actually getting out onto a golf course, putting these into a gaming environment where you get an understanding of how they're gonna perform when testing is really, really important. So three tough holes, gotta to make sure I hit the fairway. Coming from the studio out onto the golf course, I was getting a massive tonk out of the Max driver and the SF Tech, but I was feeling that the, the LST was giving me more of a thuddier type of feel, but that strike there, that was very, very noisy. Strike, again, just a little bit lower in the face. If I can get that a little bit higher, should be able to get a bit more out of it.
So on the golf course, just trying to summarize these three clubs that I've been hitting out here. And for me, when I'm testing golf clubs and bringing them onto a golf course, it's all about the emotions that I'm building around them as well. So how I react to them after shot, after shot, after shot. So if I hit a good drive with one, that's gonna give me some confidence. If I hit one that's not quite as good, I'm gonna to start to lose confidence in it. If we start off with the max driver now, I've said it before earlier on, but the Max Driver really for me is a beautiful looking club. It kind of, I, I really enjoyed hitting the old um, G400 Max Driver before and I was a little bit surprised when they kind of moved away from that kind of model. So to bring that back in now as their kind of main driver that sits right in the middle between these other two clubs, I think is really, really good. And it gives me a lot of confidence on the golf course. I feel like I can maneuver the ball how I want to maneuver it. I feel like I've got control of the ball when I'm out on tight tee shots like we've had here today. The LS Tech though is a completely different animal to me. It was something that I wasn't overly confident with coming out onto the golf course. When you go from a Max driver into the LS Tech, instantly it's the visuals of it being that much smaller looking down on it at the golf ball it doesn't fill me with a great deal of confidence. Now that's just me, that isn't everybody out there. Some people like the look of smaller headed drivers, some people like the look of bigger headed driver. For me, I'm more of the bigger headed driver guy. I kind of want something that's gonna give me confidence when I put it up behind the ball. LS Tech for me, instantly on the golf course, struggling with it. I'm struggling to control the shape of it. It's not kind of doing what I want it to do. If I'm standing there trying to hit a draw and leaking it out to the right, instantly losing confidence in the driver. So for me, it's a no when it comes to the LS Tech. I'm purely based on the fact that I don't feel like I've got a great deal of control on the golf course. But the winner today for me has got to be on the golf course, the SF Tech, the straight face technology. I just feel with this club that I can aim down the right hand side of any golf course and let it just come back. So I just aim down the right and smack it and it just draws back for me. If I'm coaching someone who's struggling with their driver, having a shape of shot in their bag that is consistent is really quite important. So if you're somebody that's probably struggling with the driver a little bit, having something like this set up in your bag, I think is gonna give you a lot of confidence. The other good thing about it is it has visually looking down on the ball, it's the same size as what the Max is. So that 460 head, nice big driver looking down, again, giving me instant confidence when I'm out on the golf course. So let's look at what's happening when we actually look down on top of the driver. Ping are saying that they've changed the shape of this particular model moving into the 425. Very, very similar to what you had in the old G400 Max driver. So some, a lot of similarities in those two drivers when you look at the shape. A little bit more rounded in its profile as it works around the back edge of the driver. So inside the head you're going to have that Dragonfly technology which again is going to try and create a little bit more of a strengthening structure amongst the head because they're trying to reduce the weight as much as possible. They're also saying that they're creating some tuning position so they're trying to really dial in on the noise that comes out of these drivers now that is so subject to each individual and what they want to hear so when we test this driver it'll be interesting to see what happens inside and outside um, as we move through the different models so ping have created a t9 plus forged face so ultimately what they're trying to create is as much ball speed as they possibly can from the face itself. They've also created a little bit of a rough texture on the actual face itself, and you can certainly feel it when you rub your hands across the face. It's definitely not smooth. And again, they're trying to create a little bit lower spin from these drivers as much as possible, really, in order to give you the optimized, the ball flight, um, give you the best possible yardage that you can get. So very similar to what you've seen across other models in Ping, we have these turbulators that sit on top. So the idea of these turbulators is to generate as much clubhead speed as you can. So it's all about increasing that aerodynamics as you come through your golf swing. These turbulators, very, very similar to what you would have seen on the G410 model, but the idea is to try and just quieten that face down a fraction just to enable you a little bit of a softer look when you look down on top of it. Then we have Trajectory Tuning 2.0, which is basically the sleeve that goes on the end of the shaft, which then goes into the head. And this is movable, so you can maneuver the lofts on it from a neutral position, which says it, what it's on at the bottom of the driver, 
up and down by one degree and 1.5 degrees. You can also flatten this out as well. So as you move around, you can make the, the club to sit a little bit more upright or maybe just that slightly flatter. We've also got the Arcos system in the grip. Again, really, really good product. Arcos, if you've never used it, have a little look at Arcos, but it's a great system to have if you want to sort of dial into your numbers. So getting a bit more of a realistic performance from Arcos, especially with your driver, can only help your game. So slightly different when you move into the LS Tech, you have a 17 gram weight, which is positioned at the back of the driver. Again, enabling you to be able to maneuver that from draw to neutral to fade. Whereas in the SF Tech, you have a fixed 23 gram weight, which is positioned in the heel. The idea be behind that is to try and enable you to slow that heel down and able to square that club face up just that little bit easier. So looking at the numbers now, let's start off with the out the box version. So just a standard setup, 150 of the ball speed, coming off the face, launching it at 16.3, so way too high in the launch. Spin at 2,400 revs, which is pretty good. And then peaking out at 42 yards high with an average carry of 263. So out the box, pretty, pretty solid, just launching it maybe a fraction too high. But when I then move into the slightly lower lofted version, I can get the ball speed up at 153, so a little bit higher in the ball speed, three mile an hour quicker. I'm then launching that at 14 degrees in the launch, so again, just a fraction lower in the launch, and spinning it just a fraction lower as well. I'm now spinning it at 2,375 revs, which is a little bit lower than what I was getting out of the neutral setup. Peaking out at 37 yards high, so just a fraction lower, but now 270 in the average carry. So gaining, gaining seven yards from just moving that, moving that loft around and fitting it for what I need. So LS Tech, straight out the box, ball speed 153 off the face, so good ball speed, similar to what I was getting ball speed wise out of the max in the fitted position launching at 15.8, so again, quite high in that launch, maybe something coming in with that rough technology on the face, creating that higher launch with it. 2,725 in the spin, so a little bit higher than I probably thought that I was gonna get from the LS Tech straight away out of the box. 43 yards high on an average and 263 on an average in the carry. Now, if I go into the fitted version, which is then lofted down, We've got 155 in the ball speed off the face. So a couple of mile an hour quicker off the face in the fitted version, which again, what I would expect to get. 14.5 in the launch. So again, a decent launch out of it, but then spin dropping down from that 2.7 to now 2.4 in the spin. 39 yards high on an average and 2.73 on an average carry. So gaining another 10 yards out of the fitted version compared to straight out the box. SF Tech driver then, remember this is set at 10.5 degrees in loft compared to the nine degrees of loft that I had in the Max and the LS Tech. Now, straight out the box at 10.5, this driver is giving me 150 mile an hour of ball speed off the face. It's launching me at 16.4 and it's spinning at 3000 revs, so particularly high on the spin and, and kind of what I'd expect to get from this driver. The peaking height is at 46 yards high and 243 in the air, so carry-wise 243 on an average. Now, ball speed, when I put it down the degree, so I'm knocking it off now from 10.5 down to nine degrees in, in, in loft, we've got 150 mile an hour ball speed, so not really increasing ball speed on an average. I've taken out shot 18 because it was just a poor strike. Peaking, um, launching at 15.6, and spin, really reducing the spin by 500 revs, 2,500 in the spin, and then bringing that um, peaking out from 46 to now 40, and 249 in the carry. So increasing that carry a little bit, considering the actual ball speed hasn't really increased. But if I'm someone that's looking to find fairways, this is a club that's gonna give me a little bit more spin, it's going to stop me from maybe losing it off to the right hand side quite as much as what I've probably been doing if I'm looking at this driver. Um, so, and the numbers are kind of expect exactly what I'd expect to see. 
So there you go, there's my review of the new Ping G425 drivers. I know these are gonna be clubs that lots of people are gonna want a little look at and test when they finally hit the market. But for me, did not disappoint. I was very, very impressed when I took them to the golf course. If I was gonna play one of these drivers, it would definitely be the Max driver. I love the fact that they've gone to that bigger profile of head from the sort of 410 that they had in the last couple of years. If I was someone that was looking to hit fairways, that SF Tech absolutely works really, really well. The LS Tech, however, for me personally, was just that little bit more uncontrollable when I put it on the golf course. But what I did like about it on the golf course is the SF Tech. I could just hit it as far right as I wanted to, knowing I had the confidence to bring it back. And that's what I love about that particular model. It's gonna help so many golfers find more fairways and definitely worth a test. Now, I'm excited to put these as a head-to-head -head against some other products, and we will do that at some stage, get them on the golf course, maybe put a handicap golfer in the SF Tech and see how that performs for them. But I'd like to hear your comments down below. Put your comments down there on what you think of the review of the new G425. A big thank you to Ping as well for getting involved and sending me these products to review. If you like what you're seeing from this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. And as always, stay safe and we'll catch up with you again soon.